What's up everybody? My name is Brad and welcome back to the channel. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit off today. My allergies are just really punishing me today, but it's okay. We'll survive. We'll get through and the show must go on, right? But we're here to talk about a book. We're here for a book review. And today's book, this is probably my favorite read of 2020 so far. We'll see if it ends up being that at the end of the year, but it's definitely going to be in my top 10 by the time the end of the year rolls around. But today we're here to talk about The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This was put out by Saga Press. So last year when this book came out, there was a lot of buzz, a lot of hype surrounding the book. There was also some rumblings of people not liking it as much. It seemed like you either really loved this book or you didn't care for it much at all. It seemed like it was one or the other. So of course I had to find out what all the fuss was about for myself. And my initial sort of reaction after finishing the book was... Wow. This was my first time reading anything by Stephen Graham Jones, and honestly, I didn't know much about him or his career. I definitely didn't realize how prolific of an author he actually is. He has quite a big back catalog of books, but after just absolutely devouring The Only Good Indians, I'm in desperate need to get my hands on anything that Jones has written and read it as soon as possible. Myself being unfamiliar with Jones's work, I really had no idea what to expect from this story. And it ended up being nothing like I was expecting it to be. It almost felt like three different stories, these three distinct acts, all interwoven together, all held fast by this through thread of vengeance. Some of the people I've talked to who did not like the book, it seems more so they couldn't quite connect with Jones's writing style. And I'll be honest, at first it did take myself a while to get acclimated to his style. It's definitely different. It's definitely unique. There's this sort of air of simplicity to it, this conversational flair and cadence to his prose. If you find yourself maybe having trouble connecting with his writing style, getting into the flow of it sort of like I was at first, my big suggestion would be to slow down. This isn't a race. You're not trying to outrun the other team towards the ball on the court during a fast break. Yes, that's a basketball reference. There's a lot of basketball to be found here in this book. Take a breath. Pause of those commas like you're supposed to and take the time to ingest and digest the story in front of you. Don't just speed read through it. I think if you are able to do that, then hopefully it'll all start to flow and click like it did for me and like the story is intended to do. So this book at one point, it literally shocked me and I don't say that lightly. That does not happen to me very often at all. I think if my wife would have come in the room while I read that certain passage, she would have seen my jaw just sort of dangling down here stupidly while I was staring at my Kindle screen. You know, the story, we're sort of moving along at this consistent pace. And then seemingly out of nowhere, there's this furious whirlwind of activity, of blood and violence. These bits of supernatural mixed with this Native American folklore all swirled into one. It felt like I was just sort of hit in the chest by a stampeding buffalo. Was that too far? Maybe, maybe not. I'm leaving it in there though. But that's just sort of how I felt at that moment. And it was from that point on, that I knew I was going to love this book for the rest of the journey that Jones was going to take me on. This is a story of vengeance, of survival, of parenthood and tradition, a story of what anyone or anything would do to protect their children. Our story, we're following four Blackfeet Native American men. These aren't bad men. These aren't evil men. These are just men that made a mistake, made an error in judgment, a moment that has become frozen in time that will come back to haunt them and their families years after the fact. You've heard the saying, the sins of our fathers, and maybe in this case, it's the sins of our father's fathers. Who is to blame here? Anyone? Is it really the fault of these four men, Ricky, Lewis, Gabe, and Cassidy? Maybe the failings lie with their parents, or maybe it lies with a society that has been taught to look down on them their entire lives. Who knows? Regardless, even though they might not have realized the full ramifications of their actions at the time, it does seem like the blame lays solely at their feet. The blood is literally on their hands. Do these men, do they deserve this target of vengeance that has been painted on their backs? I guess that really depends on who you're asking. The one seeking vengeance sure does, and they will stop at nothing until that burning hunger has been fed. Jones is a captivating storyteller. There is no doubt about it. He grabbed me by the seat of my pants and drug me along through the bloodstained snow for this wild ride. From the very opening prologue, there is this sense of dread. 
like a tickling in the back of your throat like I have right now that just won't go away. It's persistent. This dread, it grows and swells until it rips full force right through the page. The inclusion of indigenous and Native American folklore in this modern day part thriller, part slasher, part straight up horror novel was really quite unlike anything I've ever read before. I haven't even touched on the villain yet. I don't want to give too much away and talk too much about it, but I will say the villain was completely distinct and at the same time, utterly terrifying. Again, it was unlike anything I've really ever experienced reading in a book before. The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones was everything I didn't know I needed in a horror novel. A tale of blood-soaked vengeance that ripples through the generations. The book is just dripping with malice, retribution, love, and forgiveness. And you combine all that with genuinely real, authentic feeling characters with beautifully stylistic prose, this Native American folklore all mixed in and you have one special book on your hands. Well, that's it. That's been my review for The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I gave it five stars. Like I said, it's my favorite book I've read so far this year. It's definitely in contention for my number one book of the year. We'll see when we get there, but it's definitely going to be in my top 10 at least once we head around towards the end of the year. Well, that's it. Again, my review of The Only Good Indians, Stephen Graham Jones, five stars. Absolutely loved it. Can't wait to dive into more of Jones's work and see what other types of stories he has in store for us. Thank you all for spending time with me today. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.